Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, I want to show you the new scopes that I've chosen. After 10 years of using the old ultrascopes, I've finally chosen to go with Nob Omniscopes. I want to show you the features, why I chose it, the cool things it does, and you can still use the Resolve scopes, there's nothing wrong with them. I just wanted a few extra features and I'm going to show you what they are. I've also got a discount code that the guys at Time and Pixels have given me. You can have a discount off any of their products. So I'll be showing that at the end. So let's go and take a look. So I'm currently working in DaVinci Resolve, but just to point out that no Omniscope actually works with other applications as well. So I could use this with Adobe After Effects, Premiere, Assimilate Scratch. I can even just look at standalone video files. So it's a really good flexible plugin. So how does it integrate with DaVinci Resolve? There's two different ways. You can either use it as an OFX plugin or you can use it as a dedicated standalone machine. So the software actually runs on its own on a dedicated machine and that's just fed via either SDI or HDMI. So that's the sort of ultimate setup, but it does work very well as an OpenFX plugin. And I'm going to show you that now. So in DaVinci Resolve, there's two different ways to apply the Omniscope. The first one is to go to the edit page and what you want to do is go to your effects and drag an adjustment clip to the topmost layer. So in this case, I've only got one layer of video, but if I had three or four, you would put it on the next available layer. And an adjustment clip allows us to place an effect just on that one clip and it will apply to everything below it. So if I go to our filters here and scroll down, you will see our Nob Omniscope plugin. I'm going to drag and drop that on and then if I select this, I can go to my effects and we can open it from here. And there it is. So now if I just remove that, I'm going to show you the other way. So let's get rid of the adjustment clip and the second way of applying it. So whichever one works best for you, if you go to the color page and instead of being on clip, if you click up here and go to timeline, what that does is it allows you to place an open effects on a node that will apply to your entire timeline. And sometimes you'll find that this isn't here. So if I just remove that, you might open your timeline and it looks like this, in which case you just need to add a serial node. And then you're going to take the Omniscope and you're going to apply it and you're going to say open display. And there is the Omniscope now sitting there. So what you would have now is you would ideally put this onto a second monitor. So you'd have a dual monitor display. Now for the purposes of this recording, I'm going to have to do it on a single screen. So you're not going to see my resolve interface too much during this, uh, this tutorial. Now, one thing to point out, uh, you don't have to do this if you're on Windows, but if you're on Mac, you have to install this plugin to start with. So you won't, this won't operate until you've done this movement. So you need to go to options and you need to go to install plugins and you need to press this install here on OpenFX and that will allow Resolve to actually see the plugin to start with. What you'll then have to do for the first time you launch it, you will have to go to connect and you will connect it to DaVinci Resolve. So you can see all the other things that it can connect to here. So it's recognizing my Ultra Studio 4K as well. And I've got Scratch in here, Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects, that sort of thing. So you're gonna connect it to DaVinci Resolve. Now, you have to do this every single time unless you go to your options here, go to your preferences and you can say auto connect on startup and choose what you want it to connect to. So in this case, DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you're on a standalone setup, you'd want to select the Ultra Studio or whatever capture card you have, whatever capture card it recognizes. So I'm going to have to keep minimizing my scope to go back to Resolve, but obviously you would have this on a separate display. So it's also important that you don't apply any effects to the node that you've got the Omniscope running on. So what I'm going to do is come back down to clips. I'm going to add a new node and we're ready to go. So let's go back to my scopes. So this is a layout that I've created and saved. I can save different layouts in here. And basically what I've got up here is I've got my three vector scopes. So my HML vector scopes, which show me uh, shadows, midtones, and highlights. So I really love this. Uh, DaVinci Resolve can obviously do this as well, but it, to me, it's a, it's a really great tool. It means I can just look at what's happening with my hue and saturation in highlights and shadows particularly. I've also got over here a separate vector scope, which is showing all my scopes together. So that's just a regular vector scope that I've got just a little bit smaller down here. I'm also running a waveform up here. You see you get these little marks here showing you when you're out of range. So I'm up to uh, 95 on this IRE scale. I've got an RGB parade down here and I've got this thing here, which is saturation versus luminance. So I've got luminance going across here. So this is showing me how 
my brightest parts of my image and saturation is going up here. So you can see that we've got quite bright image, but not too much in saturation. I've also got here a source signal. And what I like with the source signal is either running it in black and white or what you can actually do in here, if I go to the settings, is I can set it to be any particular channel that I want. So if you wanted to just monitor the blue channel, for example, where we often get a lot of noise, you can select that there quite easily. So I like looking at it in black and white. And the other thing I really like is this blanking alarm. Now I'm gonna put this on and show you. So this looks for any illegal blanking. Now on this particular program, we've actually got a dedicated crop. So it is showing an obvious blanking error here, but what's more typical is when you're zooming in say 4K down to HD and you're doing a bit of sort of pan and scanning, it's quite common to just have one or two pixels just leaking through and this and this blanking alarm will show you you've just gone a little bit too far on your zoom in. So I'm going to switch that off now because that's going to sit there flashing all the time. And next to that, I've got this thing called Snapshot. And this allows me to take a snapshot at any moment in time. And that helps me to do color grading. So I'm going to show you that uh, in a moment. And also we've got here the false color. So this allows me to see uh, overexposed skin tones, things like that. So it's just a really useful one to have on. And this has all the standards in this. If I go to the presets, I'm just right hand clicking. I've got all these different presets from all these different manufacturers. So I've got mine set to the Flanders one at the moment. And then finally here I have my histogram. So what I'm going to do is clear all this down. I'm going to show you how to set one up from scratch. So let's go to our scopes and say remove all. So once you first launch Nob Omniscope, you're going to start with a blank canvas and you can basically add all these different scopes. You can see there's tons of them in here. Um, source signal, waveform, vector scope. I'm, I'm not going to read them all out, but um, you can basically choose the one you want. So I'm going to start off with a vector scope. So I'm going to click on here and I now have a vector scope. Now you can just free position these anywhere you want. You can make them any size you want. But as you move it, you get these little guides. And these are really good for helping you to position it in a grid so you get a nice even sort of shape. So if I drop that right on the middle, it shows me that that is going to be a full screen vector scope. If I drop it on this one, it shows me the positioning where it's going to place it. So if I drop it here, that vector scope goes to the top. Now I want to change this vector scope to be my three-way vector scope. So it's going to be my shadows, midtones, and highlights. So I'm going to right hand click and I've now got the ability to either change the scope itself. So you can change the scope to be something else at any time. I've got these shortcuts to show me, so for example, split LMH, which is what I actually want. Uh, so I can do that horizontally or vertically. But down here, I've got overall settings and this shows me all the different options that I've got for this vector scope. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change it to be split LMH. You can change the ratio of what, what is low, mid and high in here. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to dim down the hue ring. So on the outside, I just get a slightly less bright view. Now what I'm going to do now is add another scope. So I'm going to say scope and I'm going to add a waveform. Okay, so here's my waveform. Now I don't need to adjust the size of it because what I'm going to do is position it. So I'm going to put it just not there. I actually want to put it here next to the vector scope. There we go. So I've now got that. So let's make that a little bit bigger and let's make this a little bit deeper. And I'm going to go to my scope and I'm going to say add new waveform again. But what I want to do is put it next to it. So to put it next to it, if I click here or here, it positions it in the middle of the vector scope and the current waveform. So while I've got two waveforms here, well, what I want to do is convert this one into luminance. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger again. Let's get these the best size we can get them. And I'm going to colorize this. This is my RGB parade. So I'm going to right hand click on here and I'm going to colorize it. So there, we're starting to build up our first scopes. Okay, let's go and grab another one. So in here I can add, now let's grab the saturation and luminance scope that I had before. And again, I'm going to drop that. I want that to be under this waveform here. So I'm going to just position that here for now. So it's taking up that whole area, but I'm going to change that in a moment. So if I go to my view, sorry, my scopes, let's grab my histogram. And I'm going to drop this here. Nope, sorry, here. And then we're going to make this one bigger. And then I'm going to drop another scope in here. So what I want is my vector scope, but full range. So I'm not going to split it into three. So I'm going to say scope, add new vector scope. 
Ah, sorry, wrong one. Actually, it doesn't matter if it's the wrong one because I can change it after. And I'm going to put that here. So let's go ahead and change that scope. So I'm going to right-hand click and I'm going to make that a vector scope. There we go. So let's bring that size in now. So you can see how easy it is to just drag and move these around exactly where you want them. So on this scope here, I'm going to just make an adjustment. So I'm going to go to my settings and I want it to be a bit brighter. I'm going to dim down the outside. I don't want the rings on there, so I'm going to take those off. And I do want it a bit brighter though. So I'm going to go into here and lift up my gain. Just like that. So I've got a little bit of a brighter view. On this one, I'm going to take off the rings as well. So I'm going to go to my settings. Oh, show rings is there as a, as a uh, quick check. And also I'm going to zoom this in slightly. So I'm going to just, I'm just using my middle mouse and I'm just zooming in a little bit. So I've got a, a slightly zoomed in view. So this one will stay at 100%. This one stays zoomed in. So I just need to fill this bottom section now. You can have as many of these scopes as you want. So there's no limit. These are resolution independent scopes as well. And they uh, do on a 12 bit as well. So again here, I'm going to say new snapshot. That was one of them. So I'm going to drop that down. I want that to be in the middle here. So I'm going to place that. How am I going to do that? Just drop it in the middle here. Let's go to new source. So source signal. I'm going to drop that this side and we can just adjust that like that. And then I just want the false color one to finish with. You've also got audio meters in here as well. There's error logging. Uh, you can add a time code display. There's 3D color cubes. And here's the false color one. Okay, so let's just add that in, something like that. And I'm going to change the false color to be a Flanders preset. And what this is doing is showing me overexposed areas. So I basically want my skin tones to not go into the yellow and red for sure. And this is just a really nice way of checking exposure. So I'm pretty set up there. So what I'm going to do is save this layout. Let's just save that. Darren one and say, okay. So just to show you some of the other scopes, if I click in here, we've got this one called channel plot and we can change this to be a 3D color cube. Okay. And you can drag that around just by taking your mouse and moving it. And I can also go in here and change it to time code with various settings in there as well. So each of these has got its own unique setting. So it's really, really good. You can really set them up how you want it to be. And you've got other ones down here. So you've got a audio meter and you've got a goniometer and you've got an error logging. Uh, to do the error logging, you have to right hand click and say start logging. The other thing to look at in here is the preferences. So if I just go in here to options and preferences, I just want to show you a few things here. You can change the scale on the side. So we're working in IRE 0 to 100 at the minute, but you've got all the way up to uh, HLG, so you can measure it in nits. You've also got Stream Deck support. Uh, we've talked about the Auto Connect on startup already. Uh, video level or data level, you've got all these different options in here. And down here in performance settings, you can choose whether you're using your GPU accelerator or not. So I'm actually running mine on a dedicated machine, so I'm getting super quick response out of this. So you can really see how powerful these Omniscopes are, but I'm going to show you some really cool things that it does. And I never thought I would say that about scopes. So let's just make a couple of quick changes. In the source signal, I'd like this to be my luminance. And I'd normally have the blanking alarm on, but I'm going to leave it off for now because of this blanking here. Uh, the histogram, I'm going to change those to be split RGB mode. So using my Alt or Option key, you can do this. What I can do is sit on top of any one of the scopes and when I press Alt, it will transition from the scope trace to the actual source image itself. So there, that's just pressing Alt, and we now see the image. And what saturation luminance is doing is the bottom line here, the x-axis, is showing our luminance. So that's um, black to white. And uh, up is going from saturation zero to full saturation. So when I press Alt, we get uh, the source image. So you can see his shirt collar here will map to this side and his hair, beard, and suit will go to this side with his face somewhere around here in the middle. And there, that just maps down. So it's really nice little tool. This works in uh, the waveform as well. So you can see the trace moving down, matching between the source and the trace. And in the vector scopes, in the three up vector scope, it actually shows me what is being highlighted in the shadows, midtones, and highlights. On the histogram, it's showing me exact RGB values at certain parameters. On the source signal and snapshot here, we can actually use it as an RGB picker. And you can actually change what it selects as well. It doesn't have to be RGB. So let's just play this through and I'll show you how useful that is. So here on this shot here, we could stop there. If we want to see the 
RGB value, I could grab this as a snapshot. So I'm going to right hand click and say take a snapshot. And then I'm going to go back to the shot that we were on before. And then what I can do is have a look at the RGB values. So if I click here, if I actually press down, I can leave that pinned and then I can go over to the skin tone here. And even though I'm in Luma mode, it recognizes the actual source signal. And I can pin that here. And now I can have a look at the, at the two and compare them. So we've got 189, 129, 111. And so we're a little bit cooler on this shot. And you can have as many of these pins as you want. And to get rid of them, just middle mouse click. So that shows you what the snapshot does as well as the alt for our RGB picker. Now I can actually draw masks on the actual scope itself. So if I just drag here, I can highlight a skin tone and it gives me an instant view of just what's inside that mask. So I can have a look on the vector scope to see how this lines up with my skin line. Now when you let go of the mouse, it automatically loses the mask. But if you press shift, it will keep that locked on. So then you can have a look at your different scopes. So you might want to just have alt S and see this in full view. So I can analyze that skin tone now and then drop it back down again. So that's a technique I used to use all the time in Resolve with a power window. But now to be able to just do it quickly in the scope is a real bonus. So it's really useful. And to get rid of that, just simply click. I can also highlight areas in the histogram. So if I want to see what's happening in this sort of luminance range, if I just drag across it, it shows me exactly what's happening in that luminance range. Another nice thing you'll notice up here on the waveforms and on the RGB parade is you get these values that's showing you your outer limits. So if I just bring down my highlights, you see that I'm actually getting a readout of where the trace is hitting. So it's just a good little visual reminder. If you press your tab key, you can actually get rid of all these menus as well. I don't need to see that this is a vector scope and a histogram. So literally just press the tab key and then they're gone. If you want to reset this snapshot, just right hand click and say reset, or you can load previously grabbed snapshots as well. So there's lots of good tools in here that's really gonna enable you to get good, accurate readings off your scopes. So Leo, this is just great, just being able to do that really quickly. So you see just how customizable and how flexible these scopes are. They're honestly, they're fantastic. I've got a music video to grade this week. I can't wait to get started with the new Omniscopes instead of using my ancient Ultrascopes. So I had a chat with the nice guys at Timion Pixels and they've given me a discount code to share with you all. You can get 15% off any of their products. So if you go in my description, have a look at the links and I've linked particularly to the Omniscope, but all their products are in there. And you just type in at the checkout, Darren15, and you'll get a 15% discount off any of their products. So go and check it out and um, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.